Hello again guys, welcome to another one of my lockdown videos. Uh, welcome to the shed. I thought I'd come into the shed today to uh, run you through one of my rigs, a rig that I've talked about quite a lot this season and that I'll be using again next season. And uh, I thought I could show you in here in a bit more detail, plus it's blowing an absolute gale outside. It's Sunday the 19th of April, uh, another three weeks of lockdown were announced end of last week. So we looks like we're in it for the long haul. So again, as I said, I'll, uh, I'm going to keep making videos uh, and this time I'm going to run you through that rig. I've mentioned quite a lot, my ledger rig that I've mentioned quite a lot um, and run into in, in, in a bit of detail previously on the bank. I thought I'd go through it properly um, in this video uh, and show you exactly what I do, exactly what I tie it up and the reasons I use it. Now, as you'll have seen in the videos as well, I'll bring this up here, I tend to use a lot on small rivers, my RVS River Ambush. Show you that there. This is the seven foot pound and three quarters version. Love this rod, absolutely love this rod. It's, uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, two piece, there's the top section. Fairly stiff, but being that it's so short, it's not a, a major problem and there is some give in it as well. Caught some plenty of smaller species on it, but it has got some backbone in it as well to um, to cope with anything larger I might encounter. Now this season, I'm gonna couple that with this reel. It's called a gochure, I think that's the way you say it. Once again, I'll put all the details of all this in the uh, section below. This is a 2000 size. It's a GT2000S by Gochure. If I can get that in the camera. There we go. Very, very cheap reel, but absolutely wonderful. Wonderful bit of kit. Um, I was put onto it, this by uh, Mark, Mark Erdwin from Fishing for Memories. Uh, he said these are absolutely value, fantastic value for money and it was bang on. Uh, it's the first one I've had and it feels absolutely wonderful. Obviously I haven't used it, but it does feel absolutely wonderful. Onto that, I have spooled up some of this stuff. It's a uh, Dower Tournament ST. Show you that in there. However, this is eight pound. It's actually got six pound on there. Um, I finished the spool off, <laughs> so it's in the bin. But that's the stuff that's that's uh, on the reel. Now, worth mentioning as well at this point, I'm not sponsored. I'm not recommending any of these products. These are just the products I use. There's no agenda here. This is what I use. I pay for it with my own money. Um, so I'll just, you know, there's there's absolutely no agenda with it at all. I'm not trying to flog products for anybody. Uh, by all means, you know, get your, get your own stuff, get the stuff you prefer, but this is just the way I do it. And my ledger rig that I use with this rod here. Right, let's uh, get the components and let's tie it up. The rod is just down to my right here. Um, the line's threaded through the rings. I'm doing this for real, this is not a mock-up. <laughs> I'm actually setting up ready for the new season because all my rods tend to live set up. Right, so what you will need is these few components I've got here. I'll run you through them as we, we're putting them on. First thing is um, Drenon Quick Change Run Rings. I've got a medium size here. You can see that there. Put it on my hand, it's probably better to see. Low resistance run ring at the top. And at the bottom, there's just a, a little clip to put your lead on or your link ledger, whatever you want to put on. That's the first thing that goes on. That's free running on the line, like so. Now, sometimes I'll use these, this setup. This setup will go onto my, my larger uh, set, uh, ledger rods that I'll use on the Avon as well. So what I like to do is buffer this in case I'm using a feeder, uh, which I do tend to use on this, perhaps a small uh, Guru Gripper feeder uh, on this rig. I do tend to use all small back, black cat feeder, perhaps a maggot feeder. I do like some protection for the line. So what I like to use is one of these this is a fox i believe they're called buffer beads but i'll put the right information up on the screen for you and this threading onto the line like so 
So this will protect the line when I'm casting out, as you can see there. That will sit in that position and just protects the line when the, with the weight of the feeder on there. Now the next thing is where things change a little bit. Because I tie up my own um, hook links, as I told you before, or I use even um, commercially bought ones, you know, shop bought ones, uh, they don't come with anti-tangle sleeves and it is a right ball leg, putting anti-tangle sleeves on every single rig you set up. And I do like the ability to quickly change hook links, you know, or maybe, um, you know, I'm, perhaps I'm fishing a small river in winter and I've got a piece of bread flake on a size six and I think I'm getting some taps, perhaps I need to cut the maggots on. It's very quick and easy with this setup to change the hook link. Uh, don't change the hook, I change the hook link and I can just quickly change perhaps to a to a shop bought one. I mean the ones I use are here in my hook wallet that's uh, very very old and fall into bits. But I tend I do tend to use either the Animal X's by Camasan. Hooks to nylon. As you can see my hook wallet has seen better days, but it's not far off being as old as me, so I can't really complain. Um, and the other ones I use are the Drennan Red Maggots. There. They're pretty much the, the, the two uh, hooks to nylons that I use. Uh, and I can use these on this setup. And it, it, it acts very, in a, you know, they're very anti-tangle, this setup. And here are my actual hook links. Keep them in one of these Guru hook link boxes. Um, and they're sort of wound on there as you can see these tend to be bigger ones bigger hooks slightly thicker line um, but with this rig set up with a six pound line on I'll always use the uh, hook link of, of a lighter diameter so if you do sna get snagged up or anything you have to pull for a break it's always the hook link that goes uh, and you get your kit back so I'll fish either three or five pound and my hook links I always tie it with fluorocarbon as well um, I use a Drennan uh, fly fluorocarbon because I like the stiffness of it um, and obviously fluorocarbon is invisible in water or practically anyway um, so I use that in a three or a five um, or if I step it up as you saw I've got some eight pound uh, ST monofilament there um, I use seven pound hook links in there on this side I do tend to keep threes and fives over here sevens over here that's the way I run things so, the next thing on is this, ProLogic Tail Rubber. It's quite a long one, as you can see. Maybe about three inches long, 75 mil, new money. And I put this on backwards. So with the pointy end pointing up towards the rod. The fat end pointing downwards. So there we've got that on now. And I found that these these fox buffer beads, I'll show you here, this camera, sit really nicely over the pointy end of that tail rubber and actually push into place. It looks locks lovely into place. So there you've got a stiff section. Next you will need a small Drennan quick change bead. It's come like that. And there are, if you haven't used these before, seen these before, there are two parts to these. There you go, that's what it looks like. What you need to do, with what I use for this, is get the inside out. We just want that piece there. And what this is, it gets tied onto the end of my line here. I always tend to use a grinner knot. But uh, I'm sure whatever knot you want to use is fine. I tend to use a grinner. I go through it about five times. Moisten up a bit and just sort of tease it down 
gently. So it doesn't kink up the main line. There we go. Pull that tight. Use the best pair of scissors I own. Right. And you will find that that Drennan quick change bead there fits wonderfully into the end of that ProLogic tail rubber, like that. And that's it. So you tie that up. And then you want to put a hook link on. Pop this bit out. Grab one of your hook links. Let's, uh, let's grab one of these uh, from over here. Let's say shop bought one. Pop this out. And all you need, which is what I tie onto the end of my um, own tied up hook links, and of course comes on the end of a shop ball to nylon, is your, your loop. I use a figure of eight loop. I'm not sure what they put on these shop bought ones, but I've never had one go at the loop before. And I don't know if you can see that there, if we bring it right into the, close to the camera. Hopefully you can see. There's a little slot in that Drennan quick change beat and you just drop the loop into that slot. Hopefully that's come out on the camera. And then we bring up our tail rubber. Trap that in place. And then we have our hook link trapped in place. And it really is a case of just popping that off. Get the hook out your finger. <laughs> popping that off there. The hook link comes off nice and quick like that. Change hook links back on again. I shall leave this one on for now. Let's say I shall leave this rod set up now. Ready for the season. Drop that hook link in there. Just makes changing hook links very, very quick. Very, very quick. And there we go. That is the setup I've been using all year. And this is the setup I should be using next season. Assuming we can get out on, uh, on June the 16th, that is. I thought, just thought I'd run you through that and the reasons for me using it. Uh, as I say, I've I have touched on that in previous videos, but I thought I'd show you in a little bit more detail and I'll put the information on the screen of, uh, of all these components and down below as well, everything I've mentioned. I hope that was useful to you. I hope you're all staying safe at home. Please stay in, please stay safe. And uh, we can all get out the other side of this and uh, get back on the riverbank. But until then, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again next time.